Hey guys, what's up? It's me, People Are 25 here, and today I'm bringing you yet another video. This time I'm bringing you my top 10 coasters at Carowinds. Now, uh, this is one that's long overdue. I looked through my playlists and trying to figure out what I was going to do next, and well, lo and behold, this is the one thing that I actually realized I'd never made a countdown for, despite visiting the park back in 2016. I made one for Magic Mountain, Knott's Berry Farm, Great America, New England. Actually, no, I have not done New England yet because I haven't been on Goliath. Uh, when it gets removed, I will. Or, um, yeah, whatever. Um, but essentially, yeah, this is long overdue. I'm going to just bring you my top 10 coasters at Carowinds. Uh, I don't know why I haven't ever done this video, but let's get this going. Just a few quick notes before we go. This was recorded prior to the anticipated announcement of their 2019 Mac launch coaster. This, uh, the, as we are recording this right here live, uh, this Mac coaster, we know it's a Mac because of the footers that are on site, uh, it has not been formally announced, we know nothing about the layout, all we know is that it's Mac and it's for 2019. There have been teasers going on with the Granny Secret Recipe via Carowinds social media outlets. And this coaster will not be present in the countdown as so, and even if it was 2019, I have not ridden it. <clears throat> and we have not seen anything of the layout yet. If it was 2019, it probably wouldn't be on the list regardless since I haven't been to Carowinds since 2016. I also will not include their two kitty coasters, Woodstock Express and Lucy's Krabby Cabbies, as I did not ride them. And Carowinds has a coaster or two that is so bad, I think Woodstock Express can actually be better than them, can beat them out. But yeah, so I'm not going to put the kitty coasters. I have been in a Woodstock Express, but it's been it's the one at Kings Island. I'm not going to compare the two. They're, they're different from what I've read. So with that out of the way, I'm going to proceed as per usual. Number 10 is Nighthawk. Now, this one is just awful. This thing is awful. It's the prototype of Coma Flying Dutchman. And if you ever, if, from a Europe, if anyone here is watching from Europe or has been to Europe, let me just compare this to Condor, the prototype Vacoma SLC. Prototypes from Vacoma, those two crates do not go together very well. They're the complete exact opposite of what you want on a, for a good roller coaster. They're extremely rough. They're like jerky transitions, mostly just a lot of head banging or uncomfortable rattling or transition issues. Condor is one of the worst rides in the, in the entire world, according to many. I think Nighthawk shares very similar reputation. This coaster, I believe, is in my bottom five of all time. Uh, so, yeah, this is not exactly <laughs> what you want. Uh, this is a very rattly, rough. Uh, only just like I mean, rough, pretty. It's mostly just rough and rattly. This thing, you're gonna feel like you're just crashing down instead of what a flying coaster is supposed to be: graceful, smooth, somewhat forceful, especially with the B and M flyers. This ride is really only doing force, and the roughness of just it's you're supposed to be like an eagle soaring on the wind. Uh, nope. This ride simulates a broken wing or a bird with a broken wing and a few missing pro chromosomes. Delivered that masterfully. But yeah. Uh, I hope, well, thankfully, sorry, Vacoma has actually learned from their mistakes, as I've been on all three Dutchmen in the United States, or in there that have ever been made, actually, and Firehawk and Batwing at Kings Island Six Flags America, respectively, are far better than this death trap. Number nine is Flying Cobras, a Vacoma boomerang, yet again cresting the bottom of a list. If you ain't Sidewinder, your chances are your boomerang's pretty bad. This was a relocation from Headspin from Giaga Lake. It was added in Carowinds after Giaga Lake went down. In 2017, went under a transformation with a new paint job, new theme, and new, and new restraints on the trains to have vest restraints instead of what they used to have. It used to be one of the better restrainted um, Vacoma boomerangs. It wasn't like they had the SLC block restraints. This one wasn't bad. Car Carolina Cobras, when I wrote it as since it was in 2016, before the transformation, but I really don't receive the new restraints helping too much unless they did some new welding. Uh, I mean, this is not exactly the best coaster. It's a boomerang, and I've liked boomerangs less the more I've been on them. And I think if I went to re-ride Flying Cobras, then Carolina Cobra, uh, this would probably be just about the same. Um, this is... I don't think this is a new credit. I just think it's a, just a transformation out of like a, a general improvement that may help just a little bit. At least it looks nice. Um, number eight is Carolina Gold Rusher. Actually, one of the better mine trains that I've ever been on. 
This, River King, and some of the other uh, European mine trains. Uh, I know some of the European mine trains are really good. But this Carolina Gold Rush is probably one of the best American mine trains I've been on. It's pretty smooth, and it's got some decent speed. So that alone puts it above about 75% of other mine trains, like Trailblazer, Dahlonega, Cedar Creek Mine Ride, Gold Rusher, at Magic Mountain. Yeah. Um... It almost beat the next entry. I really don't have a whole lot to say about this thing. I like how it's it's a nice family ride. has a lot of helixes, uh, low to the ground, some good tunnels. But other than that, it's really just a family ride. This is one that actually always, oh, like usually has a walk on as well. I was able to walk on this thing in in any well, almost any row twice. Then I got set towards the back my first time. Then I waited like five extra minutes for the front row the second time. I think I actually like the back a little more on this thing for some reason. But, yeah, that's just a little basic synopsis of Carolina Gold Rusher. We're going to move onward to the number seven, which is Carolina Cyclone, the last Carolina-themed coaster on this list. It's, along with Gold Rusher, one of the better aero loopers I've went on. It was one of the smoothest and well-paced aero loopers I've ever been on. But there's no mid-course brake run, so instead you actually get a rather comfortable pop of airtime. The restraints are some of the more skinny restraints instead of the bulky ones you see on 1970s arrows. This one's an 80s aero looper. Um, there's a nice double helix, kind of forceful even, at the end of the ride. It's, you don't see it from the outside of the ride unless you're looking down into a little trench. This thing is actually surprisingly good. And the sad thing is I almost missed out on this credit. It took me two days to find this thing operating since it was down for the whole day the first time I went and opened in the late afternoon the second day. So I almost missed out on this credit, and I would have been sad if I did. This is actually a pretty good arrow looper. I'm quite happy that I was able to get on this, and... I think this is what all aero loopers, especially the smaller ones, like a demon and corkscrew, should aspire to be. Sadly, they'll never happen. So, this is what we're going to have to deal with. I'm going to come out all the way to North Carolina if I want to ride a decent aero looper. Number six is Ricochet. Just a standard wild mouse, but um, if you know me a bit, I actually like wild mice. I find them to be quite fun. It's an average amongst the pack, but it gets the job done. And uh, In comparison to other Mac wild mice, this one doesn't really stand out. It's got, I mean, of course, it was built in the early 2000s, so that's a couple roughness, a bit of roughness around the edges, but nothing too terribly bad. It's a nice, compact um, family coaster. I was able to ride this with my entire, like, with, with me, my younger brother, and two of my cousins, so it was a fun time. I think that this is one of the better, well, I mean, this is, well, I mean, not one of the better, it's I'm average amongst the pack of wild mice, I don't know. There's really not much to talk about with Ricochet, since it's just an ordinary wild mouse. It's not like one of the large park wild mice you see at King's Dominion and Knoxbury Farm. Also, if you notice that, like, half the coaster, we're already halfway through the list, and everything here has been a family coaster except Nighthawk. Kind of strange. Um, moving on, we have Vortex. We actually have another thrilling coaster after a gap of four family coasters. Uh, yeah. I like Vortex. I'm just going to say that right now. I actually kind of enjoyed this ride, and it came close to beating a similar stand-up Georgia Scorcher, and is miles better than its commonly compared to brother, uh, not the late California's Great America Vortex, but it's late, but the late Iron Wolf, now Apocalypse. Um, I found this really only be rough around the edges, this stand-up. I wasn't too displeased with how, I was kind of surprised at how smooth it was, considering this was built in like 1992, and I will say this is a good ride to get out of the way first. Since I went on a, I think it was a Sunday and a Monday, the Carowinds? Or was it a Saturday, I think it was a Sunday, Monday. This thing can build up a line, especially gets late in the day, because this thing has poor capacity, and it stacks a lot, because of, it's got like 6x4 trains, which is way smaller than the average B&M, and it also ha has a big stacking problem, like I said earlier. So this thing's good to get out of the way first. I know a lot of people don't like Vortex. I've read a lot of complaints about Vortex, but I actually kind of like it. It's not the best stand I've ever been on. It's far from the best, actually, but I still quite like this thing. It's also pretty nice to look at as well. Number four is Hurler. Unlike the late King's Dominion Hurler, this one I actually kind of... Well, i never been on the King's Dominion Hurler. Never, I, can, I can never get on it. But from what I've read, this one is actually smooth, unlike the late King's Dominion Hurler. Of course, at the cost of inferior airtime and lack of forces. Really, this thing's just more about speed. This thing's more about speed, going over a layout. Got, it's pretty smooth for a wooden coaster, especially one in North Carolina. 
Um, that being said, I just kind of think it's sad that the fourth best coaster in a park, like, of this caliber, one of the juggernaut Cedar Fair parks, happens to be this wooden coaster, this subpar wooden coaster. This ride isn't even top 50%, and it's the fourth best thing at this park. Thankfully, of course, with the rumored 2019 coaster and the next three entries, that's what puts this park on the map. So our number three is going to be Afterburn, an actually good coaster. Very, very forceful ride. Just pretty, very close to Raptor in terms of forces. More forceful than Montu and Banshee combined. This is a very forceful, heavy positive G's. Uh, being an invert, and the inversions are all flawless. The Batwing under the tunnel is an absolutely fantastic element. It's a fan favorite amongst enthusiasts. And let me just say, the line that I waited him to get in this thing was deserved. So this thing is a fantastic BNM invert. I still give Montu a slight edge over this thing, uh, but I think this thing is an absolutely fantastic invert, and I really wish I could ride it again. Um, I just I think everything strings together very well. The ride is, like I said, is incredibly forceful in some port parts, especially when it reaches low to the ground and it goes to like the helixes over the midway. This thing is quite nice to look at, very nice to ride, and very pretty nice to re-ride as well. Love this thing. And moving on to our number two, we have Intimidator. Despite the excessive amount of trim brakes, this thing is actually really good and delivers a good amount of airtime. I was unable to secure a ride in the front row to this. I was able to get back row, but I and I was able to get towards the middle of the train, but I was unable to get front row. So even that, I would not. I think that only fails when it comes to like the actual master list. But when it comes to this list, there's no problem with it being not being in the front row. There's yeah, you know what number one is at this point. Let's just talk about this thing while it's here. This thing is a very nice out and back L shaped BNM hyper. I mean, the trim brakes, of course, are everyone's gripe against this thing, but it still is a very fun ride. Quite very smooth as expected from a 2011 BNM hyper. Um, the the V shaped trains are quite nice. Uh, the city, you have to get the center for the wind. You get the edge on the outside, like to just coast along, especially the hammerhead turnaround. Um, I think, really, the ride isn't, uh, the layout isn't very imaginative, but it gets the job done. This thing is an incredibly good ride, and sits firmly in my top ten of, on the master list. And number one, we have, of course, the obvious, the golden ticket winner, Fury 325. You really can't make many coasters that are better than this. If you have an unlimited amount of resources and a creative mind, you still probably cannot make host that better than this. This thing is masterfully engineered. This thing is just uh, the epiphany of B&M perfection. It's their finest work. I mean, at least the finest work of the 21st century. This thing is absolutely incredible. The drop goes on forever, or for a millennium, pun intended. Uh, the S-Bend laterals after the, the huge overbank turn. Uh, they're, they're quick, they're forceful, they're just fun little things about the ride, and the freaking treble cleft turned around is one of the single best elements of any coaster. Being hung 90 degrees facing the parking lot, while then simultaneously diving under the bridge is just an absolutely breathtaking experience, and one that you must experience in order to become a true coaster enthusiast. People would trek across the country from coast to coast to get to ride Fury 325, I know I did when I heard this thing opened up. I traveled to Carowinds in a detour from Florida just to get a, be able to ride this thing. This thing is absolutely incredible, and I quite like this thing. It's still in my top three, if not my favorite coaster, to this very day. I think, also, I want to talk about something else. I mean, the back half of the ride it kind of gets a little lame, but the airtime's nice. I think the best part about this ride is just not the ride itself. Not a single element in the ride, but its ability to be rewritten hundreds of times in succession without ever getting stale. This thing, I was able to marathon this thing 11 times in a row in two visits, and every time I was able just to hop back in line and every ride was as good as the next. I even played a few good games of seat roulette. And being able to get front row on this thing at one point was an absolutely amazing experience. No words can describe how amazing a front row ride was in this thing. This thing is graceful, forceful, and uh, graceful, forceful, and absolutely fantastic, and the epiphany of perfection from Bolligar and Matt Bollard. And on that note, I hope you guys enjoy the video. 
I mean, this has, that's been my top 10 coasters at Carowinds. Uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscription. It really does help me out or for whatever it's worth. <laughs> um, so, I hope you guys have a great insert unit of time here.